I'm gonna do her antlers because it seems like now like it's like too bare. Um, it's kind of weird looking, I think. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Please do. Please try anything you see here. Take it and make it your own. Do whatever you like. No, that's wrong. What color? I need like a... Oh, maybe this color. French gray. Yeah, I'm gonna use that. And what is that? Sandbar color. Yes, this. And then maybe this one too. The seashell. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna try these guys here and see what we've got. Um, so for the the, I'm just going to show you all at once because I'll probably be swapping back and forth quite a lot. So for the antlers, I'm going to try these guys here. So we have um, seashell pink, that's 1093. We have sandbar brown, that's 1094. And then I have 20% French gray, which is 1069. So let's let's start off first with the sandbar brown and go in the dark areas. Okay, so we're going to go, I'm going to start at the base here, and I kind of want the antlers to be a light color, so I'm not going to use too much of this dark brown, but I definitely need to have some shadowing at the base, and then the light is coming from this direction, but she's kind of backlit too, so I'm going to shade in directional strokes going kind of in like a curve. I hope you can see this here. I'll just bring it up. So it's kind of, I'm just like doing little short curved strokes. And it's close to the edge on this side, but not at the edge. Okay, so now I'm going to do that here, and also at the bottom of that one there, let's extend this down and do like that. So that kind of establishes like the the base of where um, the shadows will go. So let's do that on the other side just to keep consistent. So first doing the bottom. Now working my way up. Oh, let's just fix that a little. Like so. Okay, so that also kind of establishes a nice texture for us for the rest of the shading. So now I want to go in with this seashell pink. So I'm going to do... Oh, it doesn't want to stay. Here we go. Uh, so I'm using this 1093 seashell pink. And I'm just going to go on the other side. This is very close to the paper color, but it is blending it in and softening that edge there. And I'm pressing fairly hard here. Not worried too much about doing light because I wanted to have a texture. Okay. 
Okay. Let's see. Okay. And then just to see how this all will look, I'm going to um, grab my white here and let's just do the very outer edges just to kind of make the whole thing pop and then let's see if we need to add more color. I'm going for a very natural antler look and luckily they're very tan and bordering on white. So here I'm just sort of outlining, using the outline that I've provided with the drawing. Just going over it with the white pencil. Now I'm not doing underneath right here, and that's because it will be a little bit in shadow, so I'm going to leave that. And that will be in shadow, but let's do this front little piece here. And this really just makes it pop. Comes right off the background this way. All right, so yeah, you can see the difference between the two is quite dramatic. So let's go on over to this guy. And then, yeah, I will, I will do another layer of color, I think, but let's just see how it looks. Okay, this outline is actually fairly dark up here, but it's okay, the pencil, pencil can get rid of it. And if we really need to, we can use a white gel pen too. over the hair now. Alright, just brighten that up a little. And this little guy up front, let's give him some white. And getting there. Okay, so I do want a little bit more darkness. Um, I'm going to go back to this sandbar brown, I think, and just add a little bit more depth right along the darker areas. Again, using those directional strokes to maintain that texture. Right there, and just kind of give this a little bit of contrast. Let's do the same for this guy. And now moving on over to this. Let's see.
And also using these curved directional strokes gives it dimension. Otherwise it might look a little flat. Let me go in. Let's see, where is that? Here we go. I'm going to now use the 20% French gray. This is 1069 to kind of soften the area between the, the highlights and that dark area I just put in. Kind of blend the two together, create more volume. You. Glad you like it. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna actually create some cast shadows too to make them stand out even more, but that'll come in just a bit. Sometimes I like to wait to do the cast shadows of things until I see how it all comes together though. So we'll hold off on that for right now. And now I'm going to swap over to that seashell pink. And I know it's very similar in color to the one I was just using, but it is a little bit more pink. So I'm just at the very base where it meets her face, just creating a little bit more softer transition here. It's subtle, but I think it helps. And you can see I kind of like put that color right on into the area of her face too. This helps kind of meld the two together so that it feels more cohesive and not just like they're stuck on there. All right, so now that they are pretty much in place, I'm going to grab this PC 943. And like I was saying before, um, I like to add in colors from the other areas into each section. So since her hair is surrounding these antlers, I want to bring some of the hair color into the antlers and this will make it feel like the hair color is affecting that item. So just around the areas where, and oh, I'm sorry, did I say this is 943 Burnt Ochre? It's like one of my favorite colors of all time. Um, so I know that this is in highlight, but I am going to put a little bit right here and then also right just inside the highlight there. And here I'm using a very soft touch. I do not want this to be um, really, really dramatic. It's just like a touch of color. But it just kind of adds a little something extra. Makes it feel cohesive and together. So we're just going to do that anywhere where the red tones like of her ear here. Actually, let me fix this up a little while I'm over there. Um, like any of the red tones of her hair and her ears are affecting the antlers. I just want to add that. So like up here, I'm not going to do that. But let's go on over to this side here. Just warm it up a little. Mm -hmm. 
Alright. Sorry, just that was just bothering me just then. <laughs> I need to learn how to stop jumping around. Alright, we're getting there. So this just kind of warms up the spots that are close to the ears and the hair. Let me just really quick give a little bit more darkness behind that there. Now that it's in place, I can see it needs a little more there. Okay, so now that those are all set, um, I'm going to add, oh, eyelash, sorry. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more cast shadow, especially to this one here. So because the light is coming from this direction, I want to add... Now, I don't want to do it over her face, right? Because it, it is mostly a top-down light, so it wouldn't really create a, dr a um, drastic shadow over her face. But over here, it seems a little bit too light still. So I'm just going to go ahead... I'm using the same color that I used for the hair because the hair will affect this color pretty dramatically. So I'm going to do an undertone right here. Actually, right there too. Like that. And then I'm going to grab the sandbar brown that we used for the antlers because, again, well, this color will affect the other color. And right at the base where they meet, just go ahead and add that, that sandbar brown. And I'm going to do the same over here. Just add this sandbar brown a little bit into her face. Kind of mesh the two together. Again, that makes it feel cohesive. Um, see, so yeah, I think we're doing pretty good. Let me, um, there's little spots here where I would just want to add a little sparkle with the white gel pen. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If I can find it. Where are you? Here you are. Haha. -ha. So I'm just using the Uniball Signo white gel pen. Let me just prime it, make sure it's not gunky, which it is. Totally gunky. And there's a little spot here where I just want to put a little bit of the pen. And this will really make it pop more than the mark the the um the Prismacolor white. Just at the very tips where it might be catching a lot of light. This little guy here, I think I forgot. Let's do like that. So that way it really does kind of pop out, like you said. Okay. Um, all right. So now that I'm looking at it, the only thing that's missing from her face and the portrait itself is her eye color. Um, excuse me, I'm stretching. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, a little bit of white gel pen goes a long way. Okay, the reason I haven't done her eye color is because I can't figure out what color eyes I want to do. I'm leaning towards like a green or like a brown, but I'm not sure. So while I'm thinking about that, I'm going to do the, um, the branchy border.